free of repetition, which is something that is, is not so usual in, uh, in your research. And uh, it's really interesting that you are working on this uh, concept in the furniture design, the scale of furniture design. And, and the first question was for, for Zaha, and was about the role that uh, you are, I, if I'm not wrong, you have studied mathematics at a certain moment of your life. If I'm not wrong, was it Istanbul? No, Paris. Paris, ah, sorry. <laughs> and how this period of your life and how mathematics, pure mathematics, is still, in a way, inhabiting your thoughts. That's the first question for that. Well, I, I think that, uh, maybe, I think it comes more into my uh, life, maybe more now, because of the interest of uh, computing and geometry. I think when I was studying math before, I was more interested in logic and all of that, and I think I, when I went into architecture, um, maybe it only manifests itself when looking at abstraction and maybe systems of thinking, organization. So I think it, that's how it, I, I felt the interest in math came in this way, in these, in these kind of moments. And, and uh, what about is the fact that in, in this case you have developed a series, so it's a one individual, and at the same time you uh, imagine the possibility of uh, repetition of one individual uh, without any kind of variation, because that's that's really if, if I can say this uh, something of new, no, Patrick, it also. It, what you normally do in the architectural field. It would have been nice if it had variations on the, on the theme. Uh, but I, I, if you look at kind of some of our early work, you will set, find the same piece repeating itself, and maybe in this case in different colors, but um, with slight adjustments through the drawings. But I think one can think of them as you know, maybe a slight difference between the pieces. So you, uh, you, you, you could eventually think that also this chair could be eventually declined and also variated in a... Yeah, I think it could have variated, yes. Okay, this is something of, of, of interesting. And, and uh, uh, observing your chair, what is also amazing is that the, uh, the back and the seat are uh, in a way, complete individual, but uh, the arms could be shared. No? So, and this is a, if I can, this is a really, is a, is a, is a, is a sort of catastrophe. So it's a, it's a thing which is really changing the balance of comfort. How this happened and why you are taking to a common armrest. No, that's better. Um, well, actually, this, this furniture is also very similar to furniture. We, when f we first did furniture, was in '85 for a house in London, and we didn't want to make furniture. We wanted to make like um, furniture which could could float in the room, could be placed anywhere, not against a wall or anything. And we, at the time, discussed a lot the whole idea of how you sit, how two people can sit. And then this one was, uh, it came from a commission by a friend of mine for uh, his house. And he wanted something to be put against, uh, in a smaller room where people can just kind of congregate. And my, own, my furniture, when I used to have in my flat, I, I realized also you can put maybe 20 people on one seat. Uh, lots of people can actually Sit there. I mean, if you sit there, it becomes more like a like a love seat or uh, something. Like that. I mean, these pieces are very communicative. They're, they're never meant to be pushed on the wall. You can sit in many directions. You can sit more people, and slightly ambiguous how you can congregate. And I agree with Zahavi. This would be ideal if you could uh, each one could be varied and shifted. But you also talking about the auditorium chair, of course. And what is unusual there? Yes. Even there, one could imagine a 
product, which in the end is calibrated to which row you're in, which direction you take with respect to stage, or maybe also have different comfort levels and size levels. So I think that idea of repetition is um, could also be overcome there. But what is unique, I think, with our piece there is the asymmetry in the individual piece, which then motivates, comes, brings forward this idea that you're sharing the, the armrest as well. Because each chair contributes one armrest. And it's part of an overall asymmetry, which is then enhanced with the fold down, with the surprising, where the, where the asymmetrical figure becomes symmetrical, A, by folding and by repetition. I think it's a, it's a very, so we're very proud and, and I think it's a very clever product and we're grateful for it being able to develop it. And is there something also related to the, let me say, to the interval of space, the void that was yeah. thanks to this device we are created within the different sequences of chairs? Is that something that was important in, in the design phase for you or not? So did you have an auditorium with this? sequence of empty spaces can be different. Yes, I mean, that, I mean that's also a standard feature that you would that you would allow for ease, ease of movement. Um, uh, but we also like the transformation of course words. That was a challenge to make that transformation, which is a, maybe a, a, a banal happening under normal circumstances, where you have a kinetic element which is standard, but to to, to make it really transformative. Of the experience of the space and of the and the, at that moment of, of folding being quite a uh, an aspect of surprise transformation. So and also the the, the use of black and color, uh, the change of the color field and so on was of interest. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, um, this is a more general question about the role of furniture design in your in your activity. So is furniture design something which normally you develop? after the architectural concept or sometimes you start with uh, an idea which is related to a very small, very unique and sometimes that small um, I mean I think that um, I think the idea of doing furniture which is not just like uh, um, pieces which you place in a room came out because when I was doing uh, these you know, plans uh, 25, 30 years ago, people you know, always said, oh, you know, you, what kind of furniture would you put against this kind of curved wall? So it emerged from that, this idea of making islands or spaces in a, in a, a much to form a, a sequence or a fluid uh, movement within a space. And then, um, you know, we looked at pieces which are not just like a normal sofa or uh, whatever. Um, when at the time we discussed a lot when we the house of Kafka Road, the, the, what kind of bag should it have, what kind of seat, what kind of color, uh, and so on. And so um, they come out sometimes of of certain projects. They, I mean, I don't think it comes first or second, but sometimes you know maybe one is sketching or thinking of something which. Made it, I mean, this I think was based on a sketch I did for something completely different. And the office, they were trying to find a table to do, and they dug out some dude that I had done. Because I, 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 I do, for example, I would like to do a sketch, I will do it a hundred times. Because I would think, oh, I would like a, to do a bathroom and a kitchen like a bunny. You know, so I repeated that and maybe... Like an obsession. Yeah, so I will do it at the, at, you know, and then I will find a kind of rest, or, or I looked at that and then we'd look at a flower, a floral arrangement, as a, also a domestic object. So it came, came up that and that, then I was applied to many scales. The flowers applied to a chandelier, applied to a seating, uh, apply to an opera house. Uh, so the kind of the idea of floral arrangement, for example, would apply to many ideas in the sense that maybe you can have a cluster of theaters, so they are next to each other, but they share the light tower. So that, you know, 
that's how, I think this was based on the bunny. It wasn't my choice, but it's very nice. Um, but, uh, it, but I think the, the, the pieces is more to do how you can float of an object in space and you can move, uh, you can move through them. And they are more than just furniture, they're more like dividers or more like, like buildings within a building. So they don't really come after or before they come. Sometimes they kind of emerge at the same time, like the aqua table uh, came the out. One that you no, that's another one. Uh, uh, came out of maybe looking when we were doing the, the aquatic center and the idea of cantilevering, cantilever table, so you're no longer hitting your legs against the, the legs. So came out of that, so idea of cantering, making very large kind of um, structure to hold it. So it, they come out sometimes with ideas which are which are currently uh, worked on in the office. I mean, for us, the furniture is an extension of space making. So we like to create fields. We like to. You can see that our furniture is larger than most furniture you find. Larger, heavier, uh, scaled up, and comes in groups. So that's why we're saying this is for us not an object which is free floating, but it's a space making <laughs> substance, which is part of the architecture. But also, also, I'm, I'm interested in the idea of the field, and I think the field could have repetition. And it's the way you place the object in the field, you also can have variation, not only the change of the form of the field, but the object, but the way it's placed in the field or the color. And if you so, I think that also, I mean, for example, the installation here was based on a feel of the sofas of the same, so kind of no, almost floating into that space. Okay, no, and all this. Uh, I mean, Patrick thinks furniture making is entertainment <laughs> for us because everything else is so difficult, but. She's entertainment. You and, think so, no? Yeah, I mean, we told that to the to manufacturers, so we were punished for this. Uh, yeah. so, you, know, it you know you can you can in the end have it, do it, it's quick. It happens too many times that we work for three, four years on a project, nothing happens. Yeah. So here you have something which you can you, 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 always... You have the, like you say, the feeling that you could yeah. control and yeah. you have no way. Well, also, but, it's it's not good, it's good, but it's very interesting now in terms of fabrication and manufacturing, you can, you can have an idea of you know, and you can make a chair, okay, you have to resolve it formally on a, on a 3D model. They can have it made. You make, you, it's on, like an artist. On, over the weekend. You, you can work as an artist, mm -hmm. so you have an idea and you can immediately realize yeah, it and check sure. and test and well, So the, yeah. idea of, the idea of prototyping becomes a very different thing. Yeah. The yeah. prototype becomes very immediate and therefore you don't, you can make of that particular chair, whatever it is, Many variations. You can slightly change it depending on the computer model. You can change it as many times as you like. So, in a way, at the end, every individual can have a rather individual chair, you know, because you're making a one-off piece. So that I think that also completely changes manufacturing uh, techniques and uh, material. You can mill it out of metal or whatever it is, and every time. You make it out of a different material, it changes completely the quality of that piece. Now, two things. One is that uh, observing how you are, uh, in a way, following some uh, aesthetical obsession at different scales. Let's remind me the Italian tradition. But if we go back to the 50 or the 60 architect and designer, Italian architects like Albini or, or, or Zanoso, were really core different scales. So what they basically do at the scale of the big picture were in a way repeated and re uh, translated and transformed at the, at the small, small scale. No? So this question is, is this is that this sort of fractal approach. It, it's, it's so it's it, are you aware of this? And, uh, and the second question is uh, much more important and, and I we I think we are all curious to, to know your your your, your position, uh, that is, what is your your uh, uh, 
what you think about the, the uh, Italian legacy, so the, the traditional furniture in Italy from the 60s, you know, what is your relation with all this? Well, I mean, I've always, uh, you know, I, I have to confess, when I was a child, uh, uh, my parents uh, decided to refurnish our house. And um, they bought this very beautiful furniture, which was Italian. When I was maybe six, seven years old. And who did it? Do you remember? Uh, I don't know. And, and some of them looked very kind of Giovanni or whatever. But I don't think it was. I don't know. And now they're all in back then and I don't know where they are. And they were, I was very influenced by the period when, when they bought this furniture. Uh, and it was a very large kind of... They had also very nice, nice piece of furniture in the dining room, which was very... Uh, uh, like Molina, like bone, like, and um, but the furniture from the living room was like that, and I was very influenced by it. So I was, when I was a child, about ten years old, I decided to design my my room. By and yourself. By myself. Um, uh, I was one of these. I mean, I wasn't necessarily spoiled, but uh, I had an opinion about everything, even as a child. So I wanted to design my bedroom, and, and uh, this furniture was very successful because they put it in a showroom, the, the guy who made it, and so everybody, many people had this furniture. Uh, they ordered it. So, but I, but I was very interested in the Italian design at a very young age. And um, of course when I came to London, at the time in the 70s there was a complete rejection of, of, the, of all design. Design was no longer, I mean, I don't want to say anybody was interested in design, they were interested in making uh, fake things or, it was only, some architects' houses, of course, had the classic pieces of Mies and Cove and so on, but not, not a general uh, thing. Um, so I, 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 those of us who research modernism, Modernity always look back at different places in this period, from the 60s, 70s, and sometimes earlier, but the more more flamboyant period of the not the tubular furniture, but later later pieces. So I think a lot of us were very influenced. And then what happened in the 70s and 80s, I was kind of, uh, of course, there was a very big connection between the A and Super Studio. That's the point. And it's very really tend to do some Gaetano Pesce's piece, for instance, or, or, or the Radicals experience, and how it was also reinterpreted in the EA in London and here. Was, I think was quite Yeah, I mean, it was before I joined the school, yeah. but there were lots of pamphlets and things about Super Studio, the summer schools, uh, Archie Zoom. There was a lot of you know work with all these people. So I think when we started looking at stuff which was contemporary, I mean, we had to look at that in the 80s, we had to look at the 60s. And, 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 and of course, the 50s was very influential because it was very flamboyant and free form and, and sort of, uh, uh, you know, neoplastic uh, liquidity. And so I think that, um, that was, you know, so we follow, I, fo I personally followed that up, and I had many friends who were very interested, and we were all kind of students, so we couldn't afford expensive furniture, but there was, can, we couldn't buy the one piece, uh, I mean, like Carr, always when he was a student of mine, had very nice furniture. Every time he, he I mean, he, he was a, he had nice clothes as well, but he had very nice furniture, and he was just a, you know, a kid. So he saved his money and bought furniture from Italian. I think the 60s, particularly late 60s and early 70s, was the most radical, uh, transformative design movement. I mean, uh, comparable to the, the beginning of the 20s, where you had modernism exploding. And you had a set, but I think even more radical because modernism was still working with a, a fixed set of typologies a bed, a chair, a table, a sofa an armchair, 
and they were just uh, dematerialized to some extent. But then you go into the late 60s, early 70s, you have these playful scapes, these surfaces, these um, transformative landscapes, nearly, where, where all these typologies uh, break apart. Of course, it was part of a revolutionary moment, of a cultural revolution, of a hippie movement. Of, and I think it was very exciting. And uh, it was difficult to recapture that, but, but we, we looked at that a lot. And, and, and uh, we do have uh, that again, I think, in the 90s and 2000s, and some of our uh, projects, if you look at the way we used um, amorphous form, which is indeterminate to some extent, and only suggestive with respect to how you might place your body, how you might congregate, and how it constructs a kind of communicative situation. Very open-ended, playful scapes. And that, that concept thing was very powerful and has influenced us and gave us that uh, because then of course when you had the retrenchment and you had postmodernism, uh, this was really forgotten and you went back to a lot of stereotypical typologies in terms of building form and interior. And I think in the 90s and 2000s we rediscovered and picked up on what this late 60s and 70s in Italy had established and could radicalize further because we had more more tools to to um, to expand this concept of let's say fluid amorphous fields fields to be appropriated in ways we, which might be only partially predicted by the designer. I think that's that's what's most most exciting. Uh, it's not only what also happened. Werner Ponton was part of that. In some of these fantastic psychedelic spaces. So it's it's an amazing period. I I have. Oh, the last question for that is that uh, it's about Italy because I, I think you had quite several uh, occasions for stability in, in the last 10 15 years in Italy to develop by here and so on, transform all this in a, uh, real spaces, buildings, places, and, 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 and also objects and so on. But quite all of them have always uh, been extremely complicated. No, never here, if I think to Maxi or, or to City Life uh, or what I uh, directly experienced in Sardinia or, and Campania and so on and so on. So the question is if all this, it's in a way not only disturbing but uh, conditioning your idea of Italy uh, or, or not yet. No, I, I really like Italy. I mean, I think the Italians are very funny. Uh, you know, I mean, funny, ha, ha, uh, funny, strange. But I admire their. Um, I mean, they are like the Brazilians. You know, you they, mean, you, you they, prefer the Brazilians? Uh, they are based. They have a similarity in the sense that they they can waffle at you. You know, they are bullshitting. You know, but they don't know. <laughs> They can tell you stories and like, believe. Like idiots, so. <laughs> they be, they, but they believe. They believe in the possibility, and I think that is really, I think, a very nice quality. Even if it's difficult, they they intend to do it, and I think there is a real schism between the building industry and and and. Because Italy is a great manufacturing country. They make everything, clothes, shoes, glasses. They have a monopoly on all these things until China comes along. Uh, on furniture, on, and on leather goods. So they can, we know they can produce. You know, there is production, you know, I mean, there's a production facilities so that they can't produce. But I think that I mean, I have no uh, bitterness about our experience in Rome because, at the end, Rome is a really very nice project. Absolutely. And, yes. and, and I, I maybe it, it's required that much time to make it work out. I mean, you know. So I don't. I'm not angry at all about the fact. And it was very also a great learning experience for us. We had to go through five governments, many ministers, and, uh, you know, taught us something. Uh, but I think there was an enthusiasm here, and I think what happened through Maxi, that many people thought 
the Italians will not like modern stuff. They're not going to like this project. They're not going to enjoy it. And it's the, the sugar is opposite. I mean, it's, I, every time I go to Rome, it's full of people. Everybody's going through with their bicycles, everything. Uh, so I think that uh, that was, a, I think, was very important that one challenge this idea that the Italians only like historic buildings because I think also one can interpret idea of tradition in a very different new way. So yeah that's what I you know I think that you know, I don't I think that Chinese is a I mean Italy is great, you know I think everybody loves it, you know, the Germans in particular. It is the opposite of Germany. Everything Germans want is in Italy. You know, nice weather, good food, fun people, etc. Um, and I you know I think it's a, it's great. I think the Italians have to have faith in themselves that they can actually get rid of this idea of oh uh, you know they are very uh, they can't get it together. Which I, I don't believe. I mean they're not as bad as the Greeks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, I have a recent memory of. Uh, I think it was an afternoon or two years ago spent together with a Romeo G apartment in Milan. Right? We, we, we discovered an amazing, an amazing chimney of, of... Yeah, I of, think he's a brilliant, brilliant oh, guy. My God. So, this is also Italy, no? So, the fact that you have something here and we all don't know it's where, and it's more or less the, the sort of the last memory of our... Well, because it's an incredible so, uh, artisanship combined with innovation. Yes. Uh, well, this is, uh, Patrick has declared himself as the prophet of innovation. Uh, but, um, but it really is that, I mean, I think that also people uh, misunderstand that through experience and knowledge you have certain skills. And I don't mean just to keep the tradition going, but these skills are very important to invent the next thing. You can't just invent in a void. You can have some ideas which are very naive or innocent in the void, but I think to really uh, put them out in a mature way, you need that 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 kind of marriage of innovation with with uh, experience. Very experience. Thank you so much.